Welcome to the Next Cloud Podcast. Let's talk about digital sovereignty. Welcome to a new episode of the Next Cloud Podcast. In this episode, I'm excited to have two special guests, Tobias Knoppler and James Sundquist from the Next Cloud Pi project. Next Cloud Pi is a community-driven project that makes images of Next Cloud for virtual machines, Raspberry Pi, and other boards. Let's jump right in. Welcome, Tobias and James. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you. Thank you. So maybe let's start out uh, with an introduction. Um, maybe, Tobias, why don't you go first? Sure. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Tobias. I'm the maintainer of Nextcloud Pi. Um, now it's for about half a year full maintainer before I was a um, contributor together with, with Nacho who um, started the project. Other than that, I'm a full-time software developer in Germany, and um, I'm, apart from my job, I'm very invested in open source and in Nextcloud, uh, especially have uh, a number of side projects there. Uh, I have a, a number of um, open source projects on the side, um, one of which is my is a uh, Nextcloud app I started recently, Nextcloud Secrets. And maybe maybe some more interesting uh, some interesting note. I've been uh, self-hosting Nextcloud for I think about eight years now. Uh, before it was even Nextcloud, uh, I started with uh, self-hosting own cloud back then. And yeah, um, it's been quite the journey. Awesome, thank you. How about you, James? I think I started using Nextcloud after the fork from own cloud. First heard about it around 2015 uh, at the Linux Fest Northwest conference, Frank gave a talk on data silos, but it wasn't open source at that time, fully open source. So I wasn't interested, but then when the fork happened, I was down and, um, and I found out about the next cloud Pi project and Ignacio's attempts to make it next cloud easier to install and manage. Uh, and I was really interested in that. So I've been involved since then, uh, with, volunteering with the Nextcloud Pi project and volunteering the, also with the uh, help.nextcloud.com forum. And awesome. uh, it's out, yeah, outside of uh, my cat is like running around on me right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> outside of uh, doing that, I've been working in uh, technical theater and um, using a program called QLC Plus. It's fully open source lighting design software for festivals. It's been really cool. Great. So let's probably jump into uh, the main topic. Um, could you maybe give us the elevator pitch and we will later get to it in more detail about what Nextcloud Pi is, what it does, and uh, what your roles in the project are? Sure. Um, uh, for me, uh, Nextcloud Pi is, or, uh, strives to be uh, basically this solution for um, basically Imagine managed hosting next clouds uh, of, of next cloud. So you go to a provider and say, I want uh, my own next cloud instance. You do a few clicks and you get it, but on your own hardware. So the, um, the goal is to make it very easy, very approachable to host next cloud yourself on your own hardware, often on single board computers. Um, and offer you a way to do that without ever touching the terminal. And still have uh, secure settings, uh, backups, encryption, everything manageable from an uh, administration interface. For for me, it's or in my experience, which was actually the reason why I was so interested in the project, is that it not only makes it easier for me as a as an IT professional to host Nextcloud, but also it makes it approachable for people who wouldn't have the chance to do it or do it securely at all. And, um, yeah, that's what makes the project interesting to me. And as, uh, regarding my role on the project, as mentioned, I've been a contributor since, um, July or August last year, and, uh, I have now taken over the maintenance. Great. James, anything to add? I think that's awesome. Uh, and I'm just happy to help the project when I can, uh, as a volunteer. And I think a big inspiration to me has just been testing and being excited about new releases from Nextcloud and seeing how they work in um, in the Nextcloud Pi project. And as the years have gone on, I think it's been 
interesting to see all the little refinements and changes that have happened. And also there's been opportunities to like improve, I think, documentation and community outreach and things like that have been uh, interesting to me. And I think it all like it's all come together pretty nicely, in my opinion. I, I, I've been really happy with the work that Ignacio um, did early on and also Tobias now. I think it's great. Also, I'm I'm very thankful that we have for some time now, I think um, must have also been more than half a year, a, a second very active contributor that uh, helps me in actually developing the project, which is Victor or Sendai Ola on GitHub. Um, so shout out uh, to him because it really helps to not be relying on one person alone, um, which was a situation that before me was also the situation that Nacho, the original founder of the project, uh, found himself in for a long time. Yeah, and it's really nice to um, have someone that helps with that. So how do you, or why do you think that is that the um, Next Level Pi project uh, gained so much traction early on? And um, is that even because of the love of, for, for, of people for single board computers? Or what, although, um, what, what makes the Pi like a good platform? Why did you or uh, the original maintainer back then um, decided to focus on the, on the Raspberry Pi initially? I mean, I'm, I'm not even 100% sure if the focus was that much on the Raspberry Pi, but it was uh, certainly on single board computers in the beginning. And uh, later on, um, it deviated a bit from, from that focus. But in my opinion, it's just the freedom and the control uh, to uh, host your own data, to have control over your own data. And that's a big appeal to many. And um, I think there are different, there are different motivations behind self-hosting Nextcloud. And Nextcloud patch just broadens the target audience of, of people who are able to do that. Um, I think that was a very big appeal in the beginning. And also the entry point with uh, cheap hardware like a Raspberry Pi um, is very nice to, to try it out, to play around, and then to, to just upgrade according to your needs. For me, for example, it was just I, I started uh, studying computer science and I had an old laptop lying around at the beginning and I thought, hmm, why not make it a server that does something cool? And uh, I think that that was how I came to self-hosting on cloud. And later I got a banana pie at the time and uh, hosted on cloud there. Then I found the project and it just made a lot of things a lot easier. And at the same time, it's a very low entry barrier in regards to price and effort to uh, start hosting. So it, it would be fair to say that the or one of the main focuses of the project is on the Raspberry Pi, correct? I think not anymore, but it, okay. it was at the beginning. But uh, uh, by now we, are, we have arrived at the point where basically all Ambient boards are supported, all Ambient uh, single board computers. Um, Ambient is a project based on Debian that tries to support as many boards as possible. Um, or actually, we have an installer that works on any recent Debian. So you can install Nextcloud Pi on any virtual machine, on uh, any bare metal Debian installation. And we offer container images for Docker and for LXD soon probably again LXC that uh, support was dropped for some time for um, technical reasons. And I think we have a good portion of users that, that actually run Nextcloud Pi via Docker, which is a bit funny because uh, Nextcloud Pi offers this way of hosting Nextcloud without having to touch the terminal. But if you use Docker, you lose that aspect again. But yes, we still have a huge amount of users uh, hosting with single board computers. I wouldn't necessarily say mainly Raspberry Pi. Probably Raspberry Pi has become more important again with the release of the latest generation because previous generations are just hardly enough to run Nextcloud um, to, yeah, 
and 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 really have more than three or four users but with the raspberry pi 4 it's possible again and i think it works quite well for many users yeah up until yeah, the five. Oh, sorry james go ahead uh i'm just gonna say that in this way the the name nextcloud pi is a bit unfortunate just because it it was never a project that was limited specifically to the raspberry pi people of course identify with the raspberry pi but um since the project began the it's been used and tested on a number of different devices and the pi is one of them and it's it's a noteworthy one but for example the pi 4 came out in 2019 so it's quite old and there are many devices that are better um in terms of performance and in terms of options and flexibility but people want to use the pi that's fine it's um but if it makes sense nextcloud pi itself as a project is just like nextcloud you can run it on whatever you want it's more about providing kind of sane i think of it personally like providing a sane setup with mariahdb and apache to get you going what kind of single board computer would you actually recommend or what would that ideal single board computer nextcloud pi and nextcloud setup look like if it wouldn't have to be a raspberry pi it depends a bit on your actual uh, use of Nextcloud and, and what is your main focus. Let's say like three to five users for, for the home user, like who wants to sell for stuff. So in that case, something like the Raspberry Pi 4 is uh, perfectly well suited. Um, if you want to, f there are some limitations to that. For example, if you have uh, more users, you should try to or you have very active users that also use it for collaboration and so on uh, you should try to get a few more um, processor cores so a few more cpu cores is always good for web service and um, the next cloud is no difference here and if you want to run your own collabora server or your own um or, or make use of the um you recognize features in Nextcloud so you can uh, take your images and so on, the machine learning features, you should try to get a system with a bit more um, memory. So I currently am running Nextcloud Pi on a, a ROG64 Pro, um, which is a single board computer that has, I'm not actually sure, I think it has six cores um I think a few fast ones, a few uh, slower ones that share uh, some memory internally and uh, only four gigabyte of, of um, memory. That's hardly enough for the machine learning features. So that's currently why I'm considering an upgrade. And yeah, for example, I'm hosting my Collabora server uh, externally. So I don't have an issue with that. Well, so my personal Nextcloud Pi has has been on an Odroid C2, which is discontinued. It was like their first 64-bit device, but that's been since I think 2018 or something. So um, I actually migrated to 64 through Docker uh, a long time ago on Nextcloud Pi. So for me, the Raspberry Pi 4 was more about writing the documentation for the migration from 32 to 64-bit, if that makes sense. I was personally, it was frustrating that Raspberry Pi Foundation took so long to support 64-bit distribution of Debian on a 64-bit device that was running 32-bit software. It just took a long time to get there. But I think the performance benefits, especially if you're booting off of an SSD disk, are um, really impressive, even over USB 3. I mean, so for a small, I think if you have a small instance of a couple people and say you're just sharing files and you're not really using talk or any of those things which would be like myself then an older device can work fine um even a pre-raspberry pi 4 but if you change to a raspberry pi 4 with an ssd it will work notably faster um and just more performant and i also agree that even that i'm in testing like collabora I would say if you want to use something like Collabora or more powerful tools, it makes sense to get a VPS or some other server to host those things just for your own sanity and for good performance. Um, it's worth it. And if you really 
value using Nextcloud, I think at some point it's worth considering setting up something like a TrueNAS scale server, a TrueNAS server, and taking your data more seriously in terms of not expecting it to live on the one SSD or the one disk. Um, but it's a fun, it's a fun journey to go on. And I think there's a lot of devices from like the Odroid and HC4. It's what it's called. It's like a two disc, a kit. That's pretty nice. And um, there's another Odroid called like the HC3, I think. Um, that, but they get, they just start to get more expensive. So that's the thing. So it, like, where's the cutoff between getting a single board device and just going for a full on server that's really power efficient? There's sort of a gray area there. You actually touched on a few things that also impacted my personal setup. I, I used to self-host Nextcloud on a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM and um, uh, with like, an, 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 like a proper server enclosure that had like an SSD attachment to it. So I, I could like uh, probably run it from an SSD. And um, unfortunately, then I had to move to a different apartment and no, could no longer get a public IPv4 address. And then that thing started to fall apart. So I moved and migrated that installation to a VPS. But um, I fixed that network issue since. So now I'm actually backupping that VPS back home to that uh, set Raspberry Pi with that SSD to just offload some of the data because uh, storage on VPS is still expensive. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, certainly was enough for my family and a few friends who wanted to to sync files there to occasionally collaborate with uh, on Collabora. But yeah, especially with with um, as you said with the um, introduction of the recognized app in Photos. Um, yeah, the Raspberry Pi is barely enough, and um, I think we can probably uh, briefly touch on that also with the increased uh, with the decreased availability of Raspberry Pis and the increase of pricing. Um, everything points to um, the the introduction of a Raspberry Pi 5, which hopefully is going to happen soon, although they, well, they, they keep mixed messaging. Let's see what happens there. But um, let's see if, if uh, those single board computers become um, uh, cheaper again and more easily to, to obtain for, for home users. So since you, you already said that the next lot Pi also does like various images and um, builds for different architectures, um, is there any noticeable difference between the various platforms you support? Is there any feature cut off at some point, or um, are you able to to maintain like everything everywhere? Basically, everything works the same on every platform and on every uh, target. Yeah, uh, that we that we support, Ex with one big exception, and that's um, something. Uh, that, that we will have to be working on uh, then during the next time, and that's Docker, because um, you see, basically where Nextcloud comes from is um, it's it's you have a a system image that brings you Nextcloud and everything you need for it uh, on a system. You you run it on your uh, your single board computer, or you run the installer, and everything set up in the host system, and. Um, that's very different to a usual uh, container architecture like you have with Nextcloud all-in-one where you have all services uh, separate and isolated from each other. Uh, you can replace them independently. And um, that's, yeah. And, and the Nextcloud Docker container is kind of a chimera between the two. Like uh, you have... Um, you have a container, yes, but it basically contains all of these services in one container, and that makes things a bit um, that makes it a bit limited because containers are not supposed to have access to the host system like Nextcloud expects it to. So a few features uh, had to be disabled. For example, Nextcloud, Nextcloud offers Nextcloud Pi offers um, a number of tools that directly interact with the file system. Uh, for example, it offers a, a backup uh, feature that is using the capabilities of uh, ButterFS, um, which allows you to have backups that basically take no space at all uh, until you change the original finds, files. And that's a very powerful feature, but it's unfortunately not available inside Docker because this or not um, not easily available. Uh, James, um, 
correct me if I'm wrong about that, because I think you've been using the Docker container a lot more than I have. And I <laughs> might, uh, I, I might, um, uh, mix up a few of the features that are actually available, but haven't been some time ago. <laughs> Uh, still, I, I laugh. Uh, okay, <laughs> I, I just have to, I just have to laugh because it's true that the project's not designed for Docker. Yeah, but it's in Docker, and so it, it's funny that it's um over the years it's been it's been funny to maintain in Docker because it it just kind of goes against the Docker way, which is in Docker a new container is released and you pull a new container. But in Nextcloud Pi, it has its own update process. And so that's been a funny thing to navigate. Um, Docker being mm -hmm. available more for convenience as opposed to the way you're supposed to use Nextcloud Pi. Um, so yeah. there's been a lot of fu funny moments jumping into containers to like change PHP versions and do things that are uh, personally that no one should be doing. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. <laughs> It, it was definitely a, a bumpy road um, supporting the Docker container just for the differences in architecture that you would have compared to a usually a, a usual uh, Docker setup. And um, yeah, so that's the, the the main difference between the uh, target platforms that we have. It's just that Docker has been a hindsight in the past and we're trying to um, accommodate a lot of the, the risks and issues that it has. But ultimately, we will have to uh, do some bigger changes on our side uh, to um, make it a long-term viable option, also for maintenance, because it's very hard to maintain at one side the, the Docker image and at the other side the normal uh, bare metal platforms or other containers that um, emulate a whole Linux system, um, which are good alternatives to Docker, by the way. So if you want to run a container um, via LXD, you don't have the limitations that you have in Docker, and it's more viable to, to run to uh, a whole system that expects uh, things to be there like the the system manager system d or similar things i i just remember back in my like ubuntu days um i used to have like a bunch of boards lying around the term with reference hardware for everything that we, we were trying to build um and then i discovered the, the great features of uh, ci if i could get rid of a bunch of hardware and let it just render in the cloud or back then launchpad build services um what's your setup like um, do you have like a, your own room with, uh, full filled with, with single board computers or did you outsource that by now that's uh quite interesting interesting actually um we didn't have a lot of CI back, I, th I don't know, maybe um, about a year back. Um, and we did have some scripts that were automatically generating images. And then these images would be uh, created and um, be provided to a tester group in the community. And they would download it and test it on their own devices. Because as the maintainer, I, I can't provide all of these devices and also testing manually um, is a lot of work on many devices because you have to install it then you um, I don't know if how often you install images on disks but it fails occasionally and so you have to uh, debug that and to re it's, a, it's it's a lot of work and as yeah, during uh, the last year or so I have actually mostly migrated that process to emulation and we are actually running uh, we are actually t testing all of these images in uh, github ci cd um, by using uh, qemu as an emulator and we are uh, we are taking the the prepared image and we are unpacking it and using it as the system root for a um, yeah, an emulated uh, system, a, a QEMO, um, um, or a, a system D container is the right term, I think. Um, so we're running a system D container, uh, which is just a 
I don't know, you can say Docker on steroids, but it uses the the um, system root of the Docker image as its system root, and it can run system D services and so on. Some of them fail, obviously, because, for example, the Raspberry Pi image will try to control the Raspberry Pi LEDs, which aren't there in the container. But other than that, all um, processes that are relevant to us they actually work and we can run um, automated tests against it. So in GitHub CICD, we start containers for each board that we support. And then we run a script that opens uh, a headless um, web browser and uh, tries to activate the instance and to log in and um, see if everything is green and everything works. And we're working on extending that, for example, I have a already written automated test, but it's not integrated into CICD yet, um, that actually tests the backup process. And uh, we're trying to, yeah, in the future, test as much as possible automatically because uh, because we have so many platforms to support. Manual tests are just not really feasible I mean, they we we do test a lot of uh, a lot manual, but it takes a lot of development time from the actual project. What way do you like organize the, this community? I mean, I, I see and I know that you you do a bunch of things in in our uh, help dot com forum. Are you also like um, I don't know most most projects these days also run in Discord and stuff? Where can people find you? Where can people contribute? What's what's the way to get for people to get in touch? It's pretty nice. I mean, if you haven't seen the lightning talk and you're watching this, you should check out our lightning talk from October. Maybe we can include it in the notes. And Absolutely. we have, yeah. So if people want to ask about the project, um, we've had some very nice success in connecting with the help.nextcloud.com forum directly. So you can go there to write a support ticket just as you normally would. And you can add the tag NCP on your post. And if you do, we're actually monitoring those support tickets from our chat, which is in Telegram and in Matrix. And those rooms are bridged together. So it doesn't matter which one you go to if you wanted to go into a real-time chat. But you don't need to because if people see your post in the forum, they'll just go to the forum to give you an answer. Um, which which has worked nicely. So it kind of, it keeps the support tickets in the forum, which means that the results show up on internet searches, you know, DuckDuckGo and all these things. And it still gives people a place to chat, but if things get technical, they can go back to the forum to get it resolved. And um, that's been nice. And also the, uh, the documentation is there as well. You can read it at uh, docs.nextcloudpi.com, but it's also available on help.nextcloud.com within the forum, just searching around. <laughs> the docs.nextlepi.com is actually um, just a front end for the forum where you can, uh, which which I wrote when we migrated to the um, help forum. And it's a basic application that um, gets all the documentation articles from the forum, displays it uh, in, a, in a nice way. And when you click on it, you jump into the forum. Uh, I think I have. I want to make one uh, slight co uh, correction. Uh, if when you create a post on the forum, it's not a ticket um, in the sense that right. there are people paid to to work on it. Um, you will be answered by volunteers and by the community. That's just important uh, to me because uh, the project has grown very big. Um, we have about uh, we have. 14,000 clones every day on uh, GitHub, um, which is related to the internal update mechanism. Uh, so I suppose we have maybe 12,000 instances. Um, I, I would guess I don't track the, the numbers, um, directly and I don't have numbers for, for Docker. Um, and also NextLPy targets an audience that is not that are not um, IT professionals. So what that means is that we have a lot of support requests. Um, and if 
It's also a, a, a bit of pressure because if I break anything in the project, many users will not be able to fix it themselves. Uh, so that keeps me awake at night. Um, but it, uh, yeah, the, the size of the community in combination with the uh, target audience of the project generates a significant amount of, amount of, of support requests. And I'm very thankful for the community that, um, organizes itself mostly and helps each other in the forum. And, uh, that's also why we encourage all users to use the forum for help and, uh, make what help them available to others. Awesome. What's going on at Nextcloud Pay at the moment? What are you working on and what is next? So. I already touched on the amount of work that we spent on uh, keeping things from not breaking um, with with a lot of target platforms we have with the uh, um, difficulties with, with Docker and um, also with the risk of breaking something and users not being able to fix it themselves. So um, they will need a lot more help than would be the case with, for example, Nextcloud Server, where most people who run it directly are um, IT professionals. My main focus, uh, therefore, at the moment is uh, to make the project more stable and reduce the development overhead that goes into testing, fixing things that are not very, um, at, that are not at the core of Nextcloud Pi. And to try to, to, um, and at the long term to, uh, guide Nextcloud Pi into a direction where we can concentrate more on the, yeah, the extra value that it brings to the table, which is integrate, integrating and configuring everything for the user and providing uh, tools to administer the instance that are very approachable. And, um, yeah, to, to be, Precise at, at the moment, we are working a lot on improving the deployment process, or we have been working on that uh, recently a lot. So it's smoother. So it, the, the tests, the tests are better and uh, we have, um, we don't spend as much time testing manually. And next big thing that we are going to work on is to actually use Docker internally in Excel Pi. That unfortunately means that we have to discontinue the Docker version for the time being. Um, that won't happen directly. We will, we will support, um, the Docker version at least until the end of support for Nextcloud 25, which is in October, I think. Um, there will also be a blog post on the Nextcloud forum. Uh, that describes this in great detail. So um, maybe it, when this podcast podcast releases, I will have released the post and it can be included in the show notes uh, if you're interested in that. And my plan is to to use uh, to to replace all the services that we currently install on the system with Docker containers, um, because at the moment it's a really pain to to update uh, certain aspects of the system for example if you update nextcloud you have to uh, check if the php version that's installed is uh, compatible and have to upgrade that as well and that means you have to um regenerate uh, the the uh, the configuration files which are automatically managed by the system and you have to uh to to have this update working through an interface that's actually also using php which is tricky and uh then um everything is connected so if if you replace one aspect it must be compatible with everything else on a system level and that's very likely to break things and my ultimate goal which i'm not yet 100% sure that we will be able to accomplish but i'm optimistic about that is to build nextcloud pi around next nextcloud all in one so that at some point what you're actually running uh, what you're getting if you install nextcloud pi is a readily configured system or a one uh, command installation of a 
deployment that contains Nextcloud all in one and a management interface for it that runs on the host and that offers you all the capabilities that Nextcloud Pi adds to Nextcloud. And um, we would be able to concentrate on the core functionality of Nextcloud Pi, which is ease of use, backups, encryption, um, dynamic DNS uh, setup, and so on. And um, we would not have to work as much on upgrading the core system because there are projects that do it well and probably better than we do at the moment, or at least with less effort than we do. And um, that would be my direction to go for the, I don't know, for the next year probably, because it's a big undertaking. Um, I mean, that's been my my hope for a long time was to see any kind of cross collaboration, you know, between Nextcloud itself and and Nextcloud Pi, and um, the main the main driving impetus of that is just the, when you use Nextcloud Pi as as intended, right, to have uh, say a deployed image. That's that helps you guides you through the process and you can just get up and going with Nextcloud, which otherwise is a very technical project. I think that's a really laudable goal. And I love all the tooling that comes with Nextcloud Pi. So if you need to add a domain or if you need to make backups or restore, you can do these things. But this has been possible for many, many years with this project. And so since I use that, when I tried on um, standard deployment of Nextcloud, I immediately went back to Nextcloud Pi because I I like that process. And that's, I think, any part of that that can come back into Nextcloud proper or the spinoffs like AIO, which now exists. And that's a more recent project, but it's got all this momentum. That's really exciting to me because I think that there's a lot of lessons learned within this community project that are also really useful, um, potentially to the a greater audience of users and i'm excited if, as that continues i I'm, I'm excited for that process i think um oh, i'm confident that we will be able to reduce the um the time we spend on on keeping things from not breaking a, by a lot um yeah or that we can that we can uh, spend a lot less time on these things when we do that step, this architecture change, and uh, then there are some other things I want to focus on, like adding additional safety rails, for example, improving the first use experience so that you learn about the features and uh, learn and, and learn that you definitely should set up your backups now and not later, um, and stuff like that, or that you uh, that we build. Um, yeah, improve the the monitoring uh, functionality that's built into Nextcloud Pi um, that actually monitors not only your system itself, but also that your backups are new enough, for example. Um, stuff like that. There's a lot of lot of things, a lot of features I would like to add, but um, currently there's too much time going into keeping things stable and uh, I'm eager to get to a point where we can actually add value in terms of functionality again. Awesome. Anything that we haven't touched on that you would like to say? I guess I was just thinking there's so much that could be talked about really with the project, I think. Um, but just one thing that's really cool, I guess if anyone hasn't used, I'm assuming people have used Nextcloud if they're watching this. And if they haven't used Nextcloud Pi, the thing that's so amazing about the project when you use it, especially as it's intended of just setting it up on your system and then you have Nextcloud running in Nextcloud Pi, is you have a different experience than you otherwise would have in Nextcloud, which is that you can have a system that's that's running and that's stable and that's functional and it's a bit of a different process than normal Nextcloud in terms of what a stable release is. It's mo it's almost more of a support contract in a way, even though it's a community thing, because really what it is is you're running a system, it's stable, it's working, and then when it comes time to 
for an update to come out, you don't have to be like the person to test that update. Instead, you can just hang back and have your system going and the testing is happening. And then once it's it's deemed to be ready and most likely not cause breakage because others of us have been trying that process, things will get like incrementally brought out to the other user base. And nothing's perfect, which is why people should have backups and stuff. But I just think that's like so cool to try to offer that to the user base. Um, and And it's tricky because as soon as things go wrong, you go from being home enthusiast to having to be like a really technical person depending on the problem it's it's so hard to accommodate all those little use cases so all these improvements to the process are really exciting and um and i just think in general that the project has been really strong for um some years i've been i've been really so impressed with all the work that you put into it and and taking of the project and um you should be really proud it's it's great (laughs) Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want I just want to add um, that I'm very thankful for the community as a whole, and uh, especially because many active people in the community actually um, do the community management for me, and um, that would be a task that would be a lot of pressure and work for me as well because the community is big. And, uh, um, and I'm very thankful for all the people that are involved in it. For example, I haven't written more than three or four sentences of the documentation. Most of it is actually written, written by volunteers from the community, uh, that are in exchange with me, but, um, yeah, that do the writing for me and, uh, also work on it and iterate it and, and get feedback and, um, I can f- focus on development thanks to these people. Uh, yeah, and I think that's amazing. That makes the project possible um, for me because it, because I wouldn't be able to do both with the same focus. Awesome. Um, yeah, I want to encourage all the listeners definitely to give Next.py a try and um, maybe consider contributing to it, definitely. Um, and Tobias and James, um, we're very thankful for your contribution to the Next.py project with that. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to what's coming in the future. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thanks again to Tobias and James. Please check out the links in the show notes to learn more about all the things we've talked about today. Thank you for listening and we'll be back next month with another episode. Bye.